What is up everybody, my name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineers. This is the new Automatons update beta and we are back to do a couple of tests, mostly with pathing. I wanna find out how these rovers work, how they path, where can they go, where can they not go, what can they overcome, things like that. But there are a couple more things I wanna test as well. Before we get into our pathing related tests, I wanted to ask what would happen if we put the follow module on a large ship? That's the one that follows you around. What would that look like if you had a giant ship following behind you? And also, do the modules work on rovers? I know they're not meant to, but what if you just try to use them anyway? Let's find out. Okay, to try this out, we're gonna need a large ship, but where would we get one? There we go, there's a large ship. Um, I just made it and uh, uh, yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's a little wonky looking, but it'll work for our tasks. Okay, we're gonna make this thing follow us. Um, so we're not even gonna need that thing, although I'm gonna keep it here, I'm not gonna shoot it, don't worry. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop in here and grab our modules and see if we can actually get this thing working. We're gonna grab an AI basic and we're gonna grab an AI flight, which is gonna be this one right here. And we're gonna place these down in the correct orientation. Okay, see this button right here? That's called collision avoidance. We're gonna turn that on and make sure that stays on. Last episode, it, it, we, we had a lot of crashes. Okay, this should work out pretty well. I've got the speed limit set, the altitude set to 25, the AI task set to follow player, and the follow distance set to 20. Let's click follow and see what happens. Let's see if he actually starts following me. Uh, I have no clue if this is gonna work. Oh, I forgot to turn on AI behavior, I think. Let's see. Ah, oh my lord, that is actually very scary. <laughs> All right, let's 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 hop on the ground and pretend like we're going to a place. Okay, it's, it, it's just gonna follow us. Yep, cool. Let's pretend like we're going to mine something over here. We're just, we're just casually gonna go mine over here. Don't worry about me. Don't you worry. <laughs> Don't you worry one bit. Um, okay, we've run really far away here. We're gonna go all the way over here and see if it can find me. See what happens. Uh, we have a speed limit set to like 20. I'm, I'm just apparently going. <laughs> we have a speed limit set, set to like 20, so I want to see if, uh, if it crashes. Oh, I think it's gonna overshoot me. Boy, hang on now, hang on. Oh, it actually did pretty well, okay. Impressive. Wait, where are you going? What? Where are you going? Why are you going over there? Wait, no! <laughs> I'm here! Uh, is it fine? Nope, it's not fine. You know what would be worse is if it actually crashed. I'm, I'm lucky it didn't crash into my base over there. Why did it go over- let me, let me look at the settings. Did something change? Well, rip that. Did something change? Those are still fine, right? Oh no, the grid cannot move in one or more directions. I wonder why! Well, I'm kind of satisfied with that, honestly. I think we've seen all that we need to see with the large ship following me. That was, uh, that was very unexpected. I, I expected it to crash, first and foremost. I did not expect it to just do an about face toward the base and then just plop into the ground. That was very bizarre. Okay, the next thing I want to test before we get into our little pathing tests is I want to see if we can use a rover with these AI modules. But first, we need a rover. There we go, it's our testing rover. Okay, so if you notice something interesting about this rover, you are right, there is no pilot seat on this rover because it is intended only to be used via these things. Now, I'm gonna completely defeat the purpose of that uh, by adding a pilot seat for a moment because I would like to move it off of our little platform before we ask it to do some complex movement tasks. So first and foremost, let's just mm, drive it over here into the nice safe area that is whatever this area is. Okay, so we're gonna configure this thing and we're gonna tell it to, uh, to try and follow us and see if that works. So I genuinely have no clue if this is gonna work, but we're gonna go AI basic on, follow player me, and follow distance that. Okay, let's see if this works. AI behavior is on. Uh, it doesn't like that it doesn't have a thruster. So what I could do is I could try and give it, so I guess it literally cannot use the wheels, but if I give it a thruster, what if I give it like one thruster in every direction? It's so like one there, one there. Okay, it only has two thrusters right now. Will it work with those? Okay, it can follow me. That's good. I don't think, oh, it can turn using only the gyro. <laughs> so it's not actually using these wheels right now. It's it's using the, uh, I added a gyro to this thing uh, somewhere in here, right back there. So it's using the thrusters and the gyro, the thrusters to go, the gyro to turn. So um, maybe if I had two gyros, it's gonna have a lot easier of a time. Oh, it's, oh, it does not like this, okay. Let's put a second gyro in there. Nope, okay, I wanna, that's a weird spot. Can you please? Okay, fine. You just have a weird gyro poking out the side. Okay, let's go this way. Let's run away and see if it can if, if, if it can chase us down. 
Now this one I think is going to have a harder time doing that, what that one did, so. But it is coming toward us. So this is a good sign. Yeah, okay, it is coming toward us. I want to give it a higher speed. Okay, it's actually, it, it's working a little bit better now. <laughs> I set the speed limit to 100 and it feels, oh, don't go near there. It's going to crash in there. It does, it definitely does not know how to handle that hole. Actually, this kind of makes me wonder something. Can I make it go up this path right here? Because I have like a ramp. Here, you'll see it in a second. I've got a ramp right there. Can I make it go up the ramp using what it has? <laughs> Let's find out. Full speed. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. I don't think it's gonna if I'm this close. Let me back up a little bit. I'll go over here. Full speed ahead. There we go. That's what I want to see. <laughs> all right. Nice. We got there. Wait, it was starting to pick up speed a little bit. What happens if I go like all the way out over here? Wait, please don't crash into my... Why did you... Well, it actually got back up. That's kind of cool. Why did you crash into my ship, though? <laughs> I feel like Mr. Rover here is a little bit jealous. <laughs> all right, you can see in the background our two tests, how they resulted. One dis one crashed, first of all. It, it I don't know why it decided to do that, but it did. And the other one decided to run over our ships doing some sort of destruction derby or whatever. But anyways, welcome to the main part of the video. This is going to be the pathing tests. And this is what I'm really curious about, because I want to see how well these guys path. Um, and we're going to be putting them through a, a series of tests, um, starting with a valley. We're going to put one in a valley and see if it can get around the mountain to the waypoint. Uh, I don't see any valleys near us, though, so let's go find a valley. I'm going to take one of these guys with me. Okay, we have managed to find the perfect area. This is a ravine, and we have ravine 1 location and ravine 2. We're going to put a ship over on ravine 1 and see if it can path its way to ravine 2 without crashing into the mountain. Let's see what happens. Okay, I've got everything configured. We've got our Ravine 2 set as our position right here. We've also got a, uh, a flight setting of 30, mile, uh, 30 meters per second as our uh, speed limit, and we've got a altitude of 25 meters per second. Honestly, I don't care about what altitude it uses. It can either try and go over the mountain or around the mountain. Whichever way it deems necessary will be fine. Either of those will be success cases. Um, but let's see which one it chooses. Ooh, okay, it looks like it's gonna go... Well, it started looking like it was gonna go over the mountain, but now it looks like it's gonna go through. We're gonna see what happens. Okay, we're close to the mountain, but it could still detect it. Okay, it has detected it, and it has chosen... It has chosen to go over the mountain, I'm guessing? Are we going over it? I think we're going over it. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I fully expected it to go straight into the mountain there, so I am a little impressed that it has decided to go over the mountain. I like that. Um, let's see if it can get back down there without crashing. It has been a little bit liberal with the, uh, the distance it's gone from the ground there, but I, I, I do like that. I would like my ships to remain intact. So, I will say we're overshooting Ravine 2 a little bit. Which, um, wouldn't normally be a problem, it's just a little inefficient. In fact, I almost feel like he's trying to go to the base, but he's not, because I didn't set that as the location. Right? <laughs> just make sure. Um, yeah, I set Ravine 2, which is clearly right there. We're going uh, very out of our way here. Now that is interesting. See, it has returned to the base. Um, and now it looks like we're going back to Ravine 2. But it decided that it was confused, so it returned to the base location. Why did it... Why did it do that? <laughs> Unless there's some like weird AI thing in the background where it's like, Oh, I can't get to Ravine 2, let me just decide to go to the next waypoint on the list, which would be really weird because this list of waypoints, by the way, is not a list of waypoints that I select. This is a list of waypoints that I have in the game. <laughs> this is literally just my K menu GPS. Like that's all the waypoints. So does that mean that if it gets confused, it's gonna just randomly choose one of your waypoints to go to and be like, ah, I'm gonna go there now. <laughs> that would be very weird. Imagine you have waypoints across the entire, um, hey buddy, I, Okay. Okay, it, it did notice. That's good. It did notice. Hey, when in doubt, go up. I like it. Finally, it looks like we're back on track to Ravine 2. There's a little obstacle in the way, but I don't think it's gonna trigger this guy uh, to go all the way to base again. That was very strange. I'm impressed because it did get to Ravine 2. I have it set to wander when it gets there, so it could wander around now. But um, it did... Oh my gosh, are you trying to throw me off? I mean, that's fair. I did roast you a little bit. But... Uh, Anyway, yeah, in all fairness, it did get to Ravine 2, even if it took the most uh, roundabout way to get there. Let's set it to Ravine 1. I just want to see what it gets to. I feel like I'm riding a bull at this point. It's, it's trying to knock me off. Okay, we're going back to Ravine 1, everybody. Let's see what it does. Seems like this excels a lot in 
uh, straight line tasks. Because it seems like the way that it calculates the path is at first... Fair play. You see, I have a nuclear reactor right here, and the nuclear reactor shows that there's a lot of... that there's a lot of stuff left. So I don't know why that crashed. It seemed like it turned off the thrusters. For some reason, it turned them off. And that seems to be what's happening to all of my ships, because they all crash sooner or later. And it seems like they just kind of fall out of the sky at one point, and I don't know why. But anyway, you can't really fault it. It did make it from Ravine 1 to Ravine 2. Let's try something a little more interesting. Imagine you go to sleep one night, but when you awake the next morning, you're not at your home anymore. Instead, you're in a giant maze! That's right, everybody, I made a giant maze. It's very simple to us, but for an AI, it might be a little more difficult. There's only one path out. There's plenty of room for the AI, although I don't know, maybe he'll decide that there's not enough room. We'll see what happens. We're gonna turn him on and uh, and try and let him go through this maze here uh, to the exit. And when he finally gets to the exit, he will find a golden pedestal. <laughs> He'll find an empty golden pedestal. That that's that's the cruel joke, I guess. But yeah, let's go turn on our AI and see what happens. Okay, I've set our final position to maze finish, which is that golden pedestal thing. I've turned off the wandering thing, and I'll turn off the minimum range as, as well. I don't care if it goes all the way to the home, and I'm gonna turn this to 10 because I want it to get really close to it. Okay, from now uh, from here, all we have to do is turn on AI behavior. I'm gonna turn on precision mode as well, so it goes exactly to it. I think we're good. I'm not expecting much, by the way. For this one, I'm expecting it to crash into the wall, but I was impressed last time by the ability not to crash into the ravine, so maybe I'll be impressed again. Let's see what happens. All right, it's it's confused. It doesn't know where it is. That's to be fair. It woke up in a maze. Um, this is understandable. Okay. It, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that, that is actually kind of what I expected here. Um, it's having a little bit of trouble. Okay. Things are not looking good for that one, but I have a couple more as well. Um, I'm gonna. Well, I guess let's turn them on and see if they can uh, do a little bit better. Okay. This guy is immediately starting in the right direction, but. Then is crashing a little bit into the wall. It's okay, it's not over yet. You're not tipped. Um, all they have to do is go straight and turn, and that is the first leg of the journey. They just need to go straight and turn in here, and then they need to go down that way. That is the first part of the maze, and that's all they need to do, but they're, they're I, I feel like they're close to the wall and they're freaking out. So they're trying to get farther, but they can't because there's another wall. Okay, well, I guess let's get these three going as well. Let that guy go, do its own thing. Oh, it's straight into the wall as well. It's uh, having a little bit of trouble with the maze. That's okay though, that's okay though. It's gonna be fine. Let's turn this guy on. Maybe we'll give him a little bit of moral support. Um, oh, wait, hang on. Is he actually going a direction? Yellow is, <laughs> yellow is making it the farthest so far, but no, he sees blue here and figures he might be up to something that, uh, that, that is, is, okay, yep. Uh, let's put on green as well. See if green can help out the situation. Oh, the game is lagging quite a bit. I'm getting frame drops. Oh, green is going into the wall. Nope, that is not an escape, green. I'm sorry. That is my escape. That is not your escape. Uh, white is considering shooting. They do have ammo. White is considering blasting his way out, and he might be successful if he tries, but I think he might be too over. White has gone into the wrong path, but he has at least gone into the path instead of staying in the main corridor. Okay, unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not seeing that that they're uh, doing very well here. Maybe there's a couple more advancements that need to be made before the AI can get through a maze. Blue has the right idea though, I will say. The maze is now also made out of voxel and it's a lot smaller. It's bigger and smaller at the same time. It's simpler. So all they need to do is go forward, take a left, go backwards, come down here, and then come down here and get out there without getting uh, confuzzled by these two little gates right here. So this is our new maze. It's made out of voxel because I figured maybe they'd have an easier time navigating voxel than they would blocks because they're intended to be going outside and because they had no problem with the ravine. Uh, well, no, no big problem with the ravine. I don't think they can get out here, right? You guys won't mind that these are white and those are gold, right? <laughs> Probably not. Okay, but anyways, uh, yeah, this is it. There's a tiny gap right here that they could try to escape through, um, but it's it's only big enough for me to go through. I don't know if it's big enough for a ship to get through. But anyways, we're gonna see how they deal with it, starting with our main man, Red, right here. So let's turn Red on and see what happens. So, so far, Red is a little confused. Understandably, he's woken up in a different maze. It's, it's um, bigger. So that's kind of scary. But anyway, red so far is not crashing into the wall, which is a good sign. 
Never mind. Why does this AI update have such comedic timing? Whenever I say they have not crashed or I'm impressed that they have survived or something like that, they go and destroy themselves against some sort of voxel. Um, yeah, for a second I looked at that and I was like, oh my gosh, no one's driving that thing. How's it going? <laughs> this is how weird this is. Okay, let's let's turn on blue. I feel like blue is blue knows what's up. Blue's gonna get there. All right, we'll we'll follow blue as well. Okay, blue did not know what was up. Blue saw red do that and was like, that looks fun. Okay, um, in that case, let's go back here. Let's go to yell or let's go to white and see what white has to say about that. So, it, I mean, they are kind of pathing directly. So, like, them going into the wall right there is understandable because if we look at the uh, the maze layout, they're trying to get to this, this gold thing right here. So they're just trying to, like, straight line it when really they can't because there's voxels in the way. They just don't realize. Or they realize, but they're like, oh, I don't see any other possible way. <laughs> what is happening to this guy? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, well, let's let green go. Let's actually get a couple of these guys. Gold, let's get gold in here. Let's get this uh, this gray one as well. I feel like none of them are going to be able to do it because they all keep trying to beeline through the voxel, which, um, fair. Okay, let's give them an easier challenge. All they have to do is navigate around that and to the left. If they can navigate, I'm giving them a, a straight line, right? If they can navigate around that and to the left, then they are good. Let's go in here, turn back on these guys, and hop out. Fuel critical. Well, I guess we'll watch from here. Wait, where is he? Oh, he's right there. Okay, okay, he's, he's, he's looking, he's surveying. And nope, he's, he's seen it. Okay, cool. I didn't know that he would see it. He sees the top, he's contemplating shooting it to break out, that's fine. He just doesn't see the exit right there, I guess. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. He might have seen it. I think he's seen it. Just go for it, just go for it. Not into the wall, into the, into the exit, or out of the exit. Here, if you need some moral support, I'll be on here as well. Okay, let me ask you something. What happens if I say follow player me, and then I go to the exit? Like so. And like, get out here. Can you then... Where is it? It's over here somewhere. Can you then do that? Okay, it is following me. See, when I come back, it's like, hey, you're back. Well, it doesn't seem to have object permanence. As soon as I exit this bit right here, it has trouble. Okay, I think we've learned a thing or two today, and that is that these things cannot navigate inside a maze. If you put them inside, or if you put them in some sort of enclosed area, maybe even underground, they're gonna, they're gonna have a lot of trouble with navigating. They just get very confused by this maze structure, this uh, having voxels so close, they just don't seem to be able to do it. So um, maybe updates to the future will let them do that, but as of now, I would only operate them in enclosed spaces. There's one final test that I wanna do regarding the pathing, so let's go over there. Hang on, this is promising. He's moving. Wait, he's moving. If I go out here, will he will he find me? No. All right, everybody, this is my final test. We are on one side of the moon. Our point is on the other side of the moon. I want to find out if this guy chooses to go around the moon or through the moon. Uh, this one, I feel like it's, it's probably going to choose to go uh, around the moon, but let's let's find out. I really don't know what to expect. We're going about 100 here, so we are max speed at this point. Is it going to crash directly into the moon? It seems to be choosing to go through the moon instead of around it. Um, at the very least, this is not a very efficient path. It might just go to it and then kind of realize that it's going to crash into something if it doesn't slow down. We're still at max speed, though, and uh, we haven't entered peak gravity quite yet, but we should, we should in a moment, and that might give it a, a bit of a jolt. Yep, okay, so we see it freaking out a little bit. It's slowing down. It's realized we're in peak gravity. Uh... You know, I imagine if you use unlimited speed, the results will be very um, mixed. Okay, it's reevaluating here. So we've gone down to zero speed. It's like, how do we get there? There's a planet in the way, and I only realized that when I started detecting gravity. What do we do now? If I look at our things here, it says it's following around the moon. Well, we're along for the ride. We'll sit here as long as it takes. All right, it's been a couple of minutes, and it does not seem like this guy is going anywhere soon. There's a sprat over there. Anyways, yeah, so this guy is very stumped. It didn't give us any warning, to my knowledge. Uh, there's no error or anything. It just says it's still following. It's just very confused, which 
Honestly, this is a pretty good case. It stopped itself mid-flight here. It's not using that much power. It probably has uh, quite a bit of power left if I were to look. Yeah, it's got 17 days where it could sit here. Eventually you'd be like, where's my ship? And you'd go and find it and you'd be like, oh, okay, it stopped here and you'd be able to take it home even if it's got stuff on board, because it's safe. Anyways, I think we've learned everything we wanted to learn during these tests. We started with the large ship where we learned that they can indeed follow you, but are sometimes unpredictable. That guy decided to do a backflip randomly to impress me, and it ended badly. Uh, then we did the, uh, the rover, and we figured out that we can use the rover, but they can't really access the wheels. You have to use them with the, uh, the thrusters and gyros. Then you can sort of have a rover that drives. Um, however, it might try to destroy your ships if it sees them as a threat. Uh, then we did pathing stuff where we learned that the uh, ship can comfortably navigate a ravine, which is very nice, although it might sometimes make a pit stop at your base. We also discovered that the, uh, the ship cannot really navigate a maze. Uh, and by not really, I mean not at all. Whether it's a thin block maze like this one, or a, uh, a wider uh, voxel maze like this one, the ships have a lot of trouble. And you'll see the results right here. See them down there? Those little, those little maze. Those little maze entry people. What about this one over here? Let's let's check out this one as well. Just just have a little glance. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> a couple have made it into this room, but didn't make it very far. In fact, I bet you by random chance, if we spawned enough guys into this maze, one would eventually make it into this room. Maybe. Perhaps. I don't know. And then finally, we did the tests in space and figured out that uh, ships do have a little bit of trouble when going around planets. They can't really handle that uh, very well. They weren't able to... Um, to find a path to get around the moon. But anyways, that is gonna be the end of this video. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you learned anything, let me know what you learned in the comments below. If you have anything to add, let me know uh, what you wanna add in the comments below. This video was directly inspired by a couple of comments, so um, put your comment below and it might inspire a video. If you have not subscribed, feel free to subscribe down below if you wanna get updates about new videos I've posted. Link for Patreon is down in the description if you wanna support the channel. And that is gonna be the end of this video. I will see you all in the next video.